So hello, dear students. So we have now moved on the next device, which is the device to measure the viscosity of the fluids. Okay, so we have two, uh, two cylinders here. This is also called falling sphere viscometer. So today we will do an experiment on, this two, on these two cylinders. One is filled with water. This one is filled with water. We have added the ink here, so therefore it is colorful, so we can see it. And the other one is the glycerin here. So we have two fluids, two different fluids with two different viscosities and the two different properties. And we are going to measure the viscosity of these two fluids and then compare the viscosity value with the theoretical value. Okay. So now I have a roadmap here. So the roadmap is that we will first talk about the theory of the experiment and then we will have the experiment itself. So and then we will have the results, uh, compare the results with the, with the theory. And then we will move on to the discussion part, which will give the, uh, why we have the errors and what are the reasons of the errors, and etc. We will discuss the results that we have got. So first I will start with the theoretical part of the device. In theory, we will have a falling sphere. I can show you the spheres here. I have two spheres in my hand. So I will drop the spheres into those cylinders and uh, these spheres, I know the diameter of it and I know the density of the sphere and when it falls through these fluids, any of it, it can be water or it can be the glycerin, there are three forces acting on the sphere. One is the, the buoyant force or the Archimedes principle and the other one is the drag force which is the, we can simply say that it is the frictional force against the sphere. And the, another force is the weight of the sphere. Okay, these three forces are in equilibrium. So the, the sphere falls in equilibrium. Even if it doesn't fall in equilibrium, it will take a distance far away from the free surface such that the acceleration effects are cancelled out. Okay, there is no any acceleration on the sphere. And the drag force, we will use the drag force formula, which is half rho v squared into the drag coefficient into the area. Okay. This is for the drag force. And we have the buoyant force, which is the density of the fluid, the volume of the object, and as well as the g here, the gravitational acceleration. And the last one is the weight, which is the density of the object, the volume of the object, and the g here, gravitational constant. So in this experiment, it, uh, two methods are possible. You can, in one method, you can find the drag coefficient say that you are interested in drag coefficient, by this experiment you can do that, but, but to find the drag coefficient you take the viscosity values from, the, from any reference or from any the table, but if you are interested in the viscosity value and if you are trying to use this one as a falling sphere viscometer, then the drag coefficient you should know it or you should have the table for that one and then you can find the viscosity of the fluid. And, uh, the thing here is that for to find drag coefficient, we have the two formula. One is the if Reynolds number is much smaller than one, which is the possible case for the glycerin. So this one is, will be possible. Okay, I don't know. We will check it. It is possible for the glycerin. Reynolds number much smaller than one. Then we can use this Stokes equation or Stokes law, which says that the drag coefficient is 24 by Reynolds number. If Reynolds number is much greater than one, it will be a case for the water. And in on that case, we'll use the drag coefficient by, you can use any chart, so there are the CD versus Reynolds number. So the chart is CD versus Reynolds number. Or there are correlations that, that correlates CD and the Reynolds number, and those correlations are you can, so it depends on what accurate value you want, okay? Because the correlations can be on the first order, they can be on the second order, third order. Okay, we will use the correlation and at the end I will show which correlation I have used. So then this will be the method that we are going to use in our experiment. And another unknown for our experiment will be the velocity value. The velocity will be unknown. And to find the velocity value, I will, I will use the length of the cylinder that I'm, that I'm interested in, and as well as the, the time, I will use the stopwatch to find the time, and from that one I will find the velocity. Okay, this will be the second important ex uh, the equation for the experiment. 
And then I have the, all of the values are known values, and the only unknown value will be the viscosity. And viscosity is included in this Reynolds number. If you know the formula for Reynolds number, which is the rho Vt by mu. That's the formula for Reynolds number. And the viscosity is implicit, okay? This inside this Reynolds number. And uh, you will see that if the Reynolds number is much smaller than one, then it is easier to find the viscosity because this equation simplifies and therefore the result is easy to get. So this one will become the Stokes equation. If you write the 24 by Reynolds number, we will get the 3 pi mu velocity and the t. Okay. But if you have the Reynolds number much greater than one, which is the case for the water, you will see that the equations are, the, are non-linear and it is very difficult to solve it and unless you use some software or you have some online solvers to solve the second part. Okay, because second part will become difficult for the Reynolds number much greater than one, which is the case for the water. Okay, we will use the software for this one, or even you can use online solvers. Online solvers also can solve this problem. Or if you can use some numerical methods to solve the polynomial here. Okay, so this is the second part of the experiment. And for the experiment, I'm going to use a the a sphere with a diameter of 10 millimeters. This will be the diameter of the sphere that I'm going to use. And the, the, it will have a density of 1.43 grams per centimeter cube. Okay. This will be the experiment for, for today. And uh, I will write then the steps of the experiment. Which steps are we going to use? The first step will be that I will find the velocity. Okay. This will be the first step. And the second step, I will find the Reynolds number. Okay, here I don't know the viscosity value, but I will use some reference temperature to find the, to approximate it, okay, approximate the Re Reynolds number because viscosity is unknown. But there are approximate values for the viscosity. I, I can find it from any table, and I will find the Reynolds number. Now, if the Reynolds number is much smaller than one, okay, and then yes, I can use the first relationship. If it is greater than one, I can use the second relationship here. Okay, this will be the second one. And then I will write the force balance, the free body diagram, I have written it. And from that free body diagram, I will solve the equation and find the viscosity, real viscosity of the fluid. Okay. As I said, the second one is approximate. Approximate, I mean, I, will, I, I know the approximately the viscosity of the water, approximately the viscosity of the glycerin. Okay. Then from that one, I can assume the value of the Reynolds number, and then I can find the free, from the free body diagram, I can find the unknown, which is the viscosity. Okay, good. And then I will have the results, as I have said, and then discussion part. Okay, now we are moving on to experiment. I will start the experiment now. Okay, now I'm starting the experiment. So as I said, the first step will be to find the velocity of the fluid. Okay, the, sorry, the velocity of the sphere. So this is the water, as I have said, this is the glycerin. Now I will start first with the water. And the, the reason for the... I will take some reference here. This one is my height that I will start to, to calculate the time value. These are some approximate height, okay? So the reason is because if I drop the sphere from that height, you can see, so there is a possibility that the sphere gets accelerated till that location. It gets accelerated, and then it gets a terminal velocity here. It gets its terminal velocity, and from that terminal velocity, it falls in equilibrium. So if I show the free body diagram on the sphere here, say that the sphere is here, okay, and there is a weight acting on it, drag force and the buoyant force. So this one is the buoyant force, this one is the drag force, and this one is the weight, okay. But here on that, he, and if you apply the Newton's second law, F net is zero here, from this line on. But the, above the line here, you will have the net force and that will be equal to the acceleration or the change of velocity with respect to time. Okay, that will be the problem for the first part. Therefore, I take some reference. I will take the time. I will start the stopwatch when the sphere passes this line, and I will stop the stopwatch. And when the sphere is at the end of the tube, okay, I will do the experiment five times. The reason is that you will see there are lots of fluctuations because it is it, it depends on the human reaction time. Okay. And it is not always possible to get the one accurate value. They will, I will do the experiment five times, but for the glycerin, one time is enough. 
Okay, so let me start the experiment. Okay, I will drop the sphere and start the stopwatch. So let me do it. So first let me check the stopwatch if it works. Okay, now I will drop it. Let me see. Okay. Now I started the experiment and end. So the time is 3.25. Let me write the time. The first time is 3.25. I'm writing it on the board. So the T1 is 3.25 and the T2, I will do it five times, T3, T4 and the T5. Okay, I will do it five times. Okay, now I'm going to the second part. I will do it again. So I will start the stopwatch one more time. Okay. Again, I've started. And ended. So at three, let me write it here, 3.03. .03, okay, this is the second. I will do the experiment one more time and I will show, I will take the spheres now and we'll do it again. Okay, two more times. Oh, sorry, three more times. I will start it again. Let me take the stopwatch here. Okay. So I'm dropping it. As, as I said, I start the time here. Okay, when it reaches here and end at the end of the cylinder. Okay. One started. Ended. Okay. 318. And also it uh, hits the walls of the cylinder. That's also the reason of the possible error because it should go smoothly. Anyway, this is an introductory experiment. I've dropped it, I will drop it one more time. So let me drop it. So reset. Okay, started and ended. So this one has more error, 341, 3.41. Human reaction time is 0 0.25. So let me take the spheres back. Okay. Now I am doing for the last time. So the last time, let me take the stopwatch. Okay. Drop it. Start. End. Okay, 306, 3.06, and these are all for water. Let me write it here. These are all for water. Okay, now I will do the similar experiment for the glycerin, okay? So I will take the glycerin, some height, I will leave some height, say that this one. This one is okay, I think, yes. And uh, you can feel the difference between water and the glycerin. For water, I need some, you know, the, it should drop into the water, free surface, and there is not enough space for the acceleration. And, but for the glycerin, it is not so important because it has high viscosity and the high density. Therefore, the distance that, that it drops is not so, is not, doesn't have so significant impact. And as well as I live, for any case, I leave some distance so that it can reach its terminal velocity. So I will start the experiment for the glycerin. So I'm starting the experiment. So when it crosses this line, I will start it. So let me see when it crosses it. So the time started. Okay, I'm starting the time. So it is possible that we can have errors due to this reaction time as well as these reading errors. Okay, so, but parallax error, it's also called parallax error because if you, at, if you look at the experiment from different angle, you will see different heights. Therefore, you should look at from the normal angle. So it should be normal to this line so that you can see the height in, you, you can see the true height. Okay, so it goes. So during that time, I can take the measurement of the, measurement of the height of these lines for water, let me take it. It will be a simple meter. So 
it is uh, 98 centimeters for water and for glycerin it will be 55.5 again 55.5 let me do the water side again it is 98 it is exactly 98 for water but for glycerin it is so l for water it is 98 and the l for glycerin it is 56 centimeters 55.5 centimeters 55.5 centimeters okay. because i will use these distances to calculate the velocity of the flow so let me stop it okay so it ended so it is 1.32 uh, seconds sorry the time is now for glycerin 1.32 and you will have one more 32 here so because it is let me write it in overall seconds so 92.32 seconds so 90 so 92.32 seconds it is for glycerin okay glycerin you see it takes a long time for a short distance but for water for a long distance it takes lots of time now i will do the uh, calculation part and with the calculation part i've said it the diameter of the sphere is 10 millimeters the density is 1.43 grams per centimeter cube or you can convert it into a SI uh, units where it will be 1,043, so it will be 14, uh, 1,430 kilograms per meter scope in SI unit. It's not so important, so at the end you just multiply by with 1,000. Okay. So I will start the calculation part now. I will write all of the forces here and I will calculate the viscosity. And uh, of course, I should also calculate the Reynolds number for both of it and to see what is the value. Okay, so let me do that part now. We have finished the experiment. Now I'm going to write my results here so that we can compare what we have and what are the errors and why do we have errors. So I will write the glycerin first. Okay, and then I will write the similar values for water. And the experimental viscosity value I have found which is 1.13 and the theoretical value which is 1.53 okay this is for the glycerin and for the glycerin Reynolds number has become 0.05 which is much less than one therefore I can use the Stokes equation I've said it in Stokes equation you can write as CD24 by Reynolds number okay and the in this experiment, I have done one more thing here is that I have assumed that I know the viscosity and I have tried to find the velocity, okay? And then first, let me write the velocity value here. Velocity value for the experiment, it was 0 0.006, okay? This is from L by D, L by time, okay? But in the... In this part, what can I do is that I say that the mu is known. If I know mu, I compare the velocity values. And I've got the velocity value experimental, which is the same as this one, no problem. And the velocity value, the theoretical value has become the 0 0.008. Okay, from the formula, I've got this velocity value. So I've done two calculations. In one calculation, I have assumed that the velocity is known I've calculated the viscosities and in the second one I have assumed that the viscosity is known and I have calculated the value of the velocity. And you can see the velocity values are not so different so they are almost the same 0 0.006, 0 0.008 but in the viscosity values we have the error but the re I will talk about the reason of the error in the next after finishing this part so let me write the similar values for the water. Okay. For water, I can erase this part some more. And uh, for water, I've got that the viscosity is 0 0.0075. And this one is by experiment. You can write the units kilograms per meter second. And the viscosity value in theory has become 0 0.0008. 
Okay, seven. And the temperature, by the way, is 26 degrees. It is the room temperature, 26 degrees. And the Reynolds number for water has become 400. Reynolds number, it, has, it was 480. And then I have, I have got the, similarly here, I assume that the mu is known. And therefore, the velocity value has become, in theory, it is 0 0.38. In experiment, it has become 0 0.31, okay? So this is the end of the uh, results of the experiment. Let me put a line here so we can see it. This part is for water. Let me write it. This part is for water, and this part is for the glycerin, okay? These are the values. Now the comes the last part, the discussion part, and I will discuss the results. And you can see that there are errors. In water, for the viscosity values, we have the more error, but the velocity value is good. They are approximately the same. And for the glycerin, velocity is approximately the same, and the viscosity is also OK. But for the viscous value of the water, we have a large error. So we will talk about the, about the reason of the error in the next part, which is the discussion part. Okay, so now comes the discussion part. I'm going to discuss why do we have the errors. And by the way, I will, I have used the, for the viscosity drag coefficient of the, for the glycerin case, it was easier. I have said it is Stokes equation. And for the water case, the drag coefficient, it will be on the screen. And you will see that the, it's a long equation on the screen. And the, that equation is the equation that we are using to find the drag coefficient of the water. Okay, now I'm continuing the discussion part. We have the errors. The first important uh, reason for the error is the human reaction time. For glycerin, it is okay. You can see the results are good, no problem. And uh, the, for water, you can see the time, it is 3.25. The minimum is 3.03 .03 and the maximum is 3.41. You can see there is a large error in the human reaction time for the water, and that small error can affect the final result because the equation is nonlinear equation, and nonlinear equations are very sensitive to the values. This is the first important result, and the second important result here is that the variation of one variable, which is a time here, the fluctuations in time, the, in the in the measurement stopwatch. So that fluctuations in time do not affect the velocity too much, but they are affecting the viscosity value. It is due to, again, the nature of the equation. Then the governing equation from the free body diagram is very sensitive to time value to calculate the viscosity rather than the velocity values. Okay. Or if you are interested, you can calculate the uncertainty analysis. You can do uncertainty analysis on the equation here. And you will see that for the uncertainty analysis, the velocity, uh, the time, sorry, the time uncertainty affects more the viscosity uncertainty rather than the velocity uncertainty. It is again due to the nature of the equation. Okay, so with this one, the human reaction time and the uncertainty analysis of the equations, these are the main reasons for the errors. And with this one, I have finished the experiment for this week. And the next week, we will have one more experiment on fluid mechanics. I hope you enjoyed the experiment and best wishes. Thank you all.